What up, Queen? What's going on? You know, somebody respected my talents around here. All right. Now, the first time we see Terry is Terry's with the gang. Now, BMF, BMF Detroit, this branch of the organization, they're going through some hardships. And what I mean by that is they standing on business, but business is also kicking back. Kick it back. Oh, Eric, that will be on the soundboard. That will future will be on the soundboard. We still don't trust you. <laughs> now, last week, we we lost our brother Diz. Now, there was a group down in Louisiana called the Hot Boys. We on fire. You know what I mean? There was a group called the Hot Boys. I like them hot, the ones that don't tell me to stop, eat, swallow, the, and they know how to pop. I need a project, a hood rat. One of them give a fuck and say, that, is it, don't get with it. See, we had that group down there. Well, Diz was the original Hot Boy. Diz got lit the fuck up. And now everyone around the city is like, hey, bro, you heard about that barbecue? A barbecue? Yeah, but they said Henry was cooking niggas. Cooking niggas on God. Like, damn. What you mean she's cooking niggas? Dog, that crazy bitch got a flamethrower. Nigga, who got a flamethrower in Detroit? Nigga, Henry, dude. How the fuck can we get a flamethrower? Nigga, I didn't even know they invented that. I thought that shit was only in TV. No, nigga, they said she got one on the block, nigga. God damn. So now everybody done pulled up to the goddamn, they done pulled up to the diner. Hey, Terry, what were you doing? I don't know who this guy is. We're going to call this nigga Timothy. Timothy showed up with some antique guns. Terry said, man, get this shit off my table, man. They're like, no, nah, we got to make a move. If we don't make a move, then what we going to do, Terry? Everybody going to think we saw They're going to be trying to play us. She's like, nah, I mean, they ain't going to be trying to fuck with us for real, for real, are they? He's like, man, if we don't make a move now, they going to be on our ass, man. They going to be on our ass. But Terry has other plans, and Terry's plan is to go the friendly way, the same way MLK said, nonviolent, nonlethal. Not fighting back with fighting back, but fighting back with our words. Let's have a sit down. Let's talk it out. Let's try to come to an agreement. Let's set some terms. You got your side of the city. I got my side of the city. Imano, Imano, mi casa, su casa. That type of shit. The only problem is Henry ain't trying to hear none of that shit. Henry ain't trying to hear none of that at all. Now, do you guys think that Terry is wrong for trying to, to resolve this without any violence? Or are we looking at Terry like Terry's kind of compared to what Meech is doing? Like, if you look at Meech's situation, when Meech is into like wars and stuff, Meech ain't trying to go to war either, but Meech will stand on business and send some hitters out there. Are we looking at Terry as being weak? Or are we just saying, man, hey, that's a good, that's a smart move. Good decision. Because I'm with Terry. I mean, if someone got hit with a flamethrower, I'm just going to, I'm going to be real with y'all right now. Like, if I'm sitting in here and they telling me what happened, hey, Mo, what's up? Hey, we got to go to the diner. Damn, what happened? Man, it's early as a motherfucker. It's seven o'clock. Yeah, Terry said we gotta show up to the diner. All right, man. All right, y'all. I'm gonna handle the, the funeral expenses for Diz. Damn, Diz is dead. Hey, hey what happened to Diz? Man, they got hit with a flamethrower. When you say hit with a flamethrower, you mean like they 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 gun butt him with the flamethrower? No, nigga, they caught that nigga on fire. Then when they do that, and after the Pistons game, I 
Mo, uh, oh, okay, oh, me, it's on me. Just, just to reiterate, off of this going to war with this Henry girl, what does she identify as? Do we, do we know? Is it he, she, them, days in, or whatever it is? We trying to go to war with someone that has access to a flamethrower. I'm gonna be honest with you, Terry. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been down with BMF since season one. I'm as real as they come, but I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not like, come on, man. Like, I can tell my people, yeah, I got shot. Here go a bullet wound here. I got shot here. I got stabbed here, but. I can't go back to my people and tell them I got caught on fire with a flamethrower. Like that's just, that's, that's not something I really want to go to war with. You know what I mean? You, you don't get cool points. Like let's say, let's just use 50 for a minute. 50 cent got shot nine times. We like, damn, that nigga is a soldier, man. He a real street nigga. If they were to say 50 cent got hit with a flamethrower for nine seconds, None of us would say, man, damn, that nigga 50, the realest nigga ever. No, you don't get any credit for getting hit with no flamethrower. You just get burnt the fuck up. There's no like, damn, nigga, you did that. Remember, what did Pac say? They asked me how I live with five shots. Niggas, it's hard to kill on my block. Nigga can't say it. Niggas, it's hard to kill with nine seconds of flamethrower, but niggas, it's hard to kill on my, like, no, you're not getting no brownie. I'm not trying to get caught on fire. I'm not trying to get caught. I don't know if we should be going to war with Henry. Uh, so I'm with Terry. Hey, take them guns. Get them guns out of here, man. <laughs> I ain't even got the lung capacity to be around all that smoke. I'm over here coughing right now. This, who got a zoo? Got some weed in here? I'm coughing off just the smoke in here. You talking about a flamethrower? Yeah, I'm with Terry, man. Get those guns out of here, man. We're not going to war with Henry. Let's talk this one out. Let's talk this one out. I burnt my hand on the stove when I was younger. I'm talking about my shit look like a burnt hot dog. Pause. My shit was so burnt up. I don't, I don't want to go to war. Oh, well, if I got pushed, if I got pushed in the grave like Terry, I'll tell you one thing. I would have climbed out that grave in that suit and been trying to whoop some ass. Now, pushing me in the grave is too far. You know what I mean? If you got a flamethrower, I'll talk my shit when you leave. But if you push me down and, and do a grave, oh, I'm getting out that grave. It's a, it's only six feet deep. That means I can stand up and I'm almost eye level with that motherfucker. It's going to be right here at my head where my hairline is, is where the top of the grave is. I'm climbing up out that motherfucker like Michael Jackson on Thriller and I'm on your ass. I'm getting about that motherfucker. Ding, 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 ding. I'm on your ass. You think Brian about to get up out of there after pushing? Nigga, I had to pay for this suit, bro. Shit, I would have got about that grave. They were like, oh, shit, the dead is risen. Oh, no, that's just that nigga mode. But first of all, I wouldn't even been pushed in that motherfucker. I'm already, like, whenever I, you, well, as far as I am now, maybe back in the day, I wasn't too conscious. It's like, you know what I'm saying? aware of all of that but i was bioenvironmental so whenever there's an open hole oh i never approached that that was my job i had to make sure that motherfuckers didn't fall in that that was my job to make sure y'all were safe so i wouldn't have been walking around that empty ass grave anyway for a nigga to be able to push me in there because i always think what if i slip and fall someone accidentally bumps into me who oh, don't know but just all right Let me just ask y'all this since we're talking about it. If you had to choose between neither one, you're going to survive both of them. You're going to survive both of them. But would you rather get shot or would you rather get hit with a flamethrower and you survive both of them? Yeah, Ken Dollar came about that hard. <laughs> It's 
It already came about that grave on their ass, nigga. Me and Bryant, one on one. Pause to that one on one too. But nah, it's either you get shot or hit with the flamethrower. Man, shoot me. <laughs> shoot me. I'm not getting hit with that flamethrower. Cause like let's say, like anywhere you get hit with that flamethrower, your body is melting. Like, fuck that. Just give me the bullet. You know what I mean? All right, so Terry trying to talk it out with Blaze. Let's continue on. They end up having to sit down. And the reason they're having to sit down is because you remember, Terry went to Blaze's house. When Terry went to Blaze, he was like, man, your daughter's wilding out in these streets, man. I really need you to help get her off my ass, bro. And he's like, man, you know, that's my daughter, bro. I'm, I'm doing what I can, but at the same time. At the same time, it's my daughter, and whatever she do is what she do. Do you guys believe that Blaze? Like, if we're if we're being honest, when Blaze sits down and he gives the gift, he's like, "Here, I know you got a newborn. Here you go." I thought we had us a peace treaty. Yeah, I did too. I thought we were good. Blaze has the power to, like, all he needs to do is send his, excuse me, send his security, send his security over and tell his daughter, hey, chill. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, the day go in, shout out to Gorilla, but you got to be looking at the bigger picture. Terry does got the peerage work. Your daughter really ain't got no work. And remember, Henry's only working in the suburbs. She's also getting played right now by Detective Jim, but we're going to get to that a little bit later when we get to the administrator group. We're going to break that down into two parts, but Blaze is like, all right, I thought we had something. Terry's like, we did, but your fucking daughter is catching niggas on fire, bruh. There's a dude named Diz. His name ain't Diz no more. That nigga's name is Dizzy, because that nigga in the grave. He discombobulated. He don't know which way is up. That nigga's under the dirt. They put him six feet deep. We got to dig him up to talk to him. So, no, we don't have a deal. Now, would I have been wrong to open the gift to see what the gift was? Before I returned it. You know what I mean? Like. At what point do we return the gift? Like you send me a gift. At this moment, we don't know where we're what direction we're going to go. In. We don't know where we're at. So if I open up this gift. Oh, OK, this is nice. But then I tell you, no, it's no deal. Can I still keep the gift or do I have to give you the gift? I don't know how that works because I'm a person. I don't celebrate birthdays. I don't celebrate holidays. I don't give gifts. I don't do none of it. I don't, I think all of that shit is stupid. You know, if I, if I want to get you something, I'll get you something. But like birthdays, I don't celebrate birthdays. All my birthdays, I'd be on lives with y'all or I go to work. I don't, I mean, I might go travel or do something. But other than that, don't give me any gifts. I'm not good at accepting gifts. I'm not good at buying gifts. So can I like look at the gift and say, okay, let me, on, what, is, what is that? This is good. This is good. Hey, 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 what, what is this daddy talk? I've never, I've, I, I ain't got no kids. I ain't nobody. Daddy ain't nobody. Daddy, 
If you fuck with me, you can call me Julius. If you know me, you can call me Mo. <laughs> that's that's the only that, that's the only thing it is with me. I ain't got no I ain't no zaddy. I ain't I ain't got no kids. Don't call me daddy. Don't call me none of that shit. My name is Mo. And if you know me, then it's the Mo you know. And if you really know me, then it's Julius. But now I ain't no oh, like if I fuck with you, yeah, we go on trips. I'll take you places, but man, I don't, all that extra shit, I ain't yeah, nigga, please. <laughs> nigga, please. I ain't get up and go to work to spend money on your ass. I I'm paying this electricity over here. You want to come over here, hang out, watch TV, get something to eat? I got to eat too. Okay, cool. It ain't no 50 50 over here. I take care of everything, but you know what I mean? But shit, that's my gift to you <laughs> me living as an adult. <laughs> we go on a trip. I was talking to, um, I was talking to one of these ladies. So I'm going to the Olympics and, um, I was looking at hotel rooms. I was talking to her and we would look, well, she was looking at hotel rooms and telling me like different places that she stayed or whatever. And uh, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the Olympics. But the rooms are going for like $600, $700 a night for the Olympics. And I was like, uh, we were talking. She was like, damn, I go to the Olympics too. I was like, damn, it'd be cool. Like if I get tickets, you can, you can definitely come. She's like, I'm gonna stay with you. I said, if you stay with me, you're gonna have to pay half of that room. Look, now me personally, my budget, to go to the Olympics, this would be my first time ever going to the Olympics. So I'm willing to pay $500 a night. I can pay up to $500 a night for two nights. Friday night, Saturday night to go. This is the Olympics. Plus, I got to spend probably like, I think it was like $300 tickets for the, the uh, $300 tickets for basketball, even though those are sold out. But for the, uh, the athletics, like the track and field, those are like $400. But yeah, if you go with me to the Olympics, you're going to have to come half off of that room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I go down there, I got 500 to pay for myself. But if someone's coming down there with me, shit, uh, this room for two nights with two people on there come up to $1,400. You have to, to come up with your 700 You have to come up with your 700 or stay your funky ass at home and I knock off the two guests and put that motherfucker back on one and get that bitch down to 1000 No, no. No. Now, if we go into Paris on a regular weekend, don't worry about it. Hotel taken care of. I, I got that. Food taken care of. But this Olympic weekend, I got to fork over two to $3,000 just for the weekend. You think I'm about to be paying $4,000 for two niggas? Hell no, nah, baby. You're going to have to pay your half. You're going to have to earn your weight over here. I get the rule, but you're going to need to send that motherfucking check before we even get there. It ain't no I'll pay you at the end. Cause I ain't one of these stupid niggas. <laughs> no, 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 no. Before I book that motherfucker, I need your cash. I need your cash before I even book the shit. No, nah, I don't do that. You can't play a nigga like me. Shit. What if I get some cat? If I get some cat, listen, if I get some cat, the cat is free. I ain't paying for no... Listen, little flip told me when I was 17 years old, I ain't paying for no sex. I'd rather buy a car or a new Rolex. <laughs> Audacious said that she might get scammed. I'm a public figure. I can't scam you. I'm going. Regardless, I'm going. See, the thing is, I do all my shit through booking.com. See, I'm a loyal member. I'm a loyal member of booking.com. Nine times out of 10, I don't have to pay until I get there. But if I don't get your money, even with my home, well, it's only, I got three homeboys that they ain't got to pay the money until like we get there. We like booking like multiple rooms. They'll pay me when we get there because I trust them. And I, you know, say I know they're going to pay that money. But yeah, man, please. If I'm going to the Olympics for two nights and it's $1,400, you think I'm paying $1,400 for another adult to be in the room with me? So when she go back home, she can go fuck another nigga? Hell no. Listen, it's $1,400. You need to come up with your $700. If not, I'll just get the room by myself, which I was going to do anyway, and I'll pay that $1,100 out of pocket by myself. It's plain and simple. <laughs> hey, Nicole knows that genius price. Hey, be on booking.com. Do, 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 do. 
pay when you get there. Oh shit, say less, there, nigga. I book sometimes I be booking three or four rooms, like shit, just to make sure. Just to make sure. See, Joseph know. Joseph and Nicole, they know that genius price. Y'all better get with it. All right. We supposed to be talking about Terry. <laughs> Kira said that Mo man. Hey, I'm just saying. If it if it's a regular weekend, like, come on, man. There ain't no woman special in my life that I'm taking them to the Olympics and paying for everything. Just for the Olympics, one day to watch track and field is three hundred dollars. I'm going two days. That's six hundred dollars plus the room. That right there alone is going to be about eleven hundred. So I'm rounding that up to two thousand dollars off rip. Plus I got to go out there. I got to buy all new gear. I got to get me some U.S. Olympic shit. I got to get some shit that says the Olympics in Paris. I got to buy all this. So I'm already looking at twenty five to three thousand dollars on my own. Nigga, I got it, but you think I'm about to pay another three bands on top of that for another individual that ain't that don't have my kids that ain't at my house? Oh, hell no. You come up off your half or you take your funky ass out there by yourself and pay 100%. Now, if we go out there this weekend, don't worry about it. I got the hotel room. The hotel room go down from $600 a night. It's only $100 a night. <laughs> I, don't worry about that. I got both nights. I got the breakfast. I got all that. I got the liquor. I got the drink. I got the food. I got all that. Don't worry about that. That That's easy. But no, this is the Olympics. It's already $2,500 minimum for myself. $2,500 by myself. And that's not even including if I'm flying out there or taking the train. Now, I'm probably going to have to fly out there because I know I'm not going to take the train all the way out there because once you get in the city, it's going to be too crowded, congested. So I'm going to have to buy me a flight out there. That's going to be about another $300, $400 because they're running the price up. Come on now. I'm already at three bands and I ain't even bought nothing. No. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I'll tell you straight up. You 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 catch me on a regular weekend. Oh, don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> the Olympics. <laughs> Due to my calculations, I think your ass owe half. All right, let's continue on. And not to mention the NBA, well, not the NBA, but the basketball shit is sold out. So I got to buy the basketball tickets through a third party. So those tickets that were $200, oh, they about to be four, $500. All right. When I wake up and go to work, my direct deposit says Mo on that motherfucker. My YouTube checks come in, that motherfucker say, Say Mo on that motherfucker. They don't say Mo and company, Mo and friends, Mo and her. None of my checks say Mo and them. That motherfucker say me. Pay to Mo. It don't say Mo split with other motherfuckers. No, 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 no. Hey, you already know what I, we get there. Oh, I'm gonna pay you when we get there. We get there day one, and she ain't got that money. You owe me some money, motherfucker. <laughs> You owe me some money, motherfucker. Nigga, it's just big me, nigga. Boom. I really like that. that. <laughs> we gonna get there. She talk about. I'm in a bind, Nate. You owe me some money, motherfucker. Nigga, it's just big me, nigga. Boom. I really like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey man i crack myself up sometimes oh man hey, it is what it is man like i'm a generous person like like i talk a lot of shit but i'm a generous person right but man i'm not getting played i know when i'm getting played She gonna be out there taking pictures, talk about. Can you take a picture of me? It ain't gonna be no pictures of me nowhere when I didn't pay for this hotel, nigga. Please, you a tourist? I'm a tourist. You need to pay your half, tourist, and I'm gonna pay my half. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Like, come on, man. 
talking about paying for the whole thing. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna pay for the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna be paying for my ass <laughs> to get there by myself. All right, now Terry gets a call from Meech because he needs a hundred, well, a thousand contract concert tickets. Now we know a thousand concert tickets really mean a thousand bricks, and the reason he's asking for this is because they're going to put this money up to try to get Carter, who's been kidnapped. Now we don't know anything about what's going on with Carter because it's Terry's story. Now Terry, he has a lot going on. He just had, he just had the one on one with Blaze, and they ain't trying to squash it. Now every time Meech calls, did you hear? How Meech sound? Hey, brother, how you doing? It's your brother, Meech. Hey, what's up, Meech? Oh, I'm just down here in St. Louis. I need a, a thousand tickets for this concert. Hey, a thousand tickets, nigga? You already opened up shot. Well, Jay Push's brother's kind of in the bind. I'm like, whoa, 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 what do you mean? Man, you know, look, they got his brother. If it was you, I would do the same thing, Terry. And Terry's looking at it like, dog, I just sent 500 bricks to Atlanta. We just went down to Atlanta. There's a war going on. So. Terry, Terry is like me. We were just laughing about me and the numbers, but that's the same thing Terry is doing right now. Terry's like, wait a minute, man. I thought this was supposed to be us. This is supposed to be us. Why are you, why are you getting all this money to them, man? Every time I look up, you're talking about, man, let's send some money to this folk. Let's send some money to this folk. Me just like, come on, man. I, I, I would do this for you, too. It's like, I know you would do it for me. I'm your brother, nigga. It's always about you. And oh, not to mention, you got a niece and she's doing fine. Now, we still haven't figured out what gift do you guys believe that Meech sent that Terry hasn't received? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Alicia said the sounds are top tier. Yeah, I'm trying to get the sounds together, Anika. I'm trying to get the sounds together. I got a couple of more I'm going to add on here. Every When I'm at work, I just be watching shit. Like when I got this one, I was I was watching uh Minister Society. I was like, oh, we need that one. You know what I'm saying? Cause we always talking money. You owe me some money, motherfucker. <laughs> Bought him some clothes. Well, a Wanda do got a mink, but we ain't. So he's like, "All right, let me let me send those to you." Now Terry, Terry got it bad, man. This is this is one reason. There, there's two main things about having a kid that that I really fear, and it just always stuck in my mind. Like we all know the story of. Um, when I went to the store and someone told me that this little kid looked like me because I was with it. That was like the first and only time I ever went out with a woman that had a kid. And we like went to the store and they said, oh, she looks just like her dad. And they were saying that I was the kid's father, but I was not the kid's father. In case of five month old Jemiah Julius, you are not. the father. <laughs> so in. in people say I was wrong because I told the lady I'm I'm not this kid's father. Like I'm 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 17, 18 years old, and they're talking about, oh, the baby looks just like her dad. I'm like, that's not my daughter. That baby don't, you know what I'm saying? I didn't say the baby don't look like me, but I just said that's not my daughter. But the baby was crying. So my two biggest fears of having kids are being out in public and the baby is crying, and you can't get the baby to stop crying, and everyone is looking at you. That's my biggest fear. The baby just you like, God damn, I just came up here to buy a pair of jeans. I just came up here to get a box of Cheerios, some Apple Jacks, and go to the crib. The baby just a crying. That's my biggest fear. And then having a baby mama like Wanda. I love Wanda. Wanda look good, but boy, she be on Terry's case every single day. This nigga Terry, I just got us a new condo. Oh, you got us a new condo for your new bitch. Like, damn. She talking about, you want to be a real dad? You want to be a real dad? You just stay here and watch this baby all night. Wait. Oh, that's Lucille's hand. I'm about to say, I know Terry ain't got his fingers painted. But Terry shows up. And they, I like Wanda's mom. Do y'all, what y'all think about Wanda's mom? Wanda's mom is cool. Like, I see, I can see me pulling up and smoking with Wanda's mom. Now, that's one thing I am good at. 
Like when it comes to like women's mothers and stuff, women's mother, like they love me. I be hanging with their mamas, kicking it. You know what I'm saying? They love me. They be, what happened to old Mo? You know what I mean? What happened to Mo? He was a good guy. Shit, that nigga Mo was in the wind. Pop the top and let the sunshine in. Now. I like her though because she's honest. She's real. You need someone like that. Because remember, Wanda was saying, oh, if it wasn't for the doctor, I don't know what I would have done. You would have had that baby. You would have had that baby, regardless if Dr. Reese was there or not. You would have had that baby, girl. But Terry shows up. Now, Wanda's going off. Not only do you got Wanda here, you got Wanda mama. And then you kind of got Lucille. Lucille, she on your side because it's your mom. See, I don't, I don't understand that. No matter, like, I ain't no piece of shit. But my mama's always going to be on my side. And she'll talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, like, hey, you need to do this, do this. But my mama always on my side. She ain't ever about to take the side of somebody else. That's not what mamas are for. Mom on my side. That's what mom stands for. Mom on my side. That's what M-O-M stands for. Mom on my side. That's what mom stands for. M-O-M-S. Mom on my side. That's what mom stands for. Remember that. Let me put that. Let me write that down for someone steals that shit. M-O-M-S. Mom on my side. Yeah, I like that. Moms. Mom on my side. Mama don't take nobody else's side. You take my side. Mom on my side. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, Kendall. I said M O M S. Moms, mom on my side. Come on, Kendall. Mom on my side. I know it's two words. That's why I said moms with an S. Moms on my side. Mom on. Kendall trying to play me. Moms equals mom on my side. You know what I mean? Moms on my side. That's what mom stand for. I'm putting that on the shirt. Don't let me find out you niggas is stealing either now. I already told y'all moms is on my side. Now, Terry ends up getting into it with Lucille. Now, we already went over this and we discussed it, but we were talking about from Lucille's side. Now we got to flip that motherfucker, flip it and reverse it. So the tables have turned, mama. You had my back, but you kept calling me out. Remember at the hospital? The scallywags, you were talking to Markeisha. Well, she plays a, a major role in my life. She ain't family, Terry. Neither is Dr. Maurice, mama. Oh, no, you didn't. You need to watch your mouth, son. That's my business. That's grown folk business. I didn't mean no disrespect by it. I was just letting you know that I got somebody special in my life. So maybe me and you are cut from the same cloth. Oh, no. You Charles' son. What me and Dr. Reese got going on, that's because me and Charles are separated. You got a brand new baby here. Don't you try to compare yourself to what I got going on. I never did that, mom. All I said was, listen, maybe me and you are more alike than you think. Yeah, I'm out here in these streets, but I'm doing that to provide for my family. What are you and Dr. Reese doing? Well, if I get with Dr. Reese, then I won't have to worry about y'all paying the bills and selling drugs. Ain't that why you're in the dope game, Terry? No, I'm in the dope game to help out around the house, ma. Yeah. I heard about the flowers that got dropped off. Nikki told me everything. Oh, so you're going to take that little attic? You're going to take her word for what it is? That's what you're going to do, Terry? The only reason she owned those pills is because of you, mama. She told me you brought those pills in there, and when she seen Wanda having the baby, and you was with googly-eyed Dr. Reese, that's the only reason she started popping the pills. You told her she didn't want to be stuck like you were. So you saying me and me, you don't love us? 
Oh, no, you didn't. You flipping my words. I did not tell her that. I told her I didn't want her to have a baby at a young age, so I gave her some birth control, Terry. Don't you do that to me. Oh, I'm just telling you what Nikki told me. That's all I'm doing. So don't, don't look at me, Ma. I have my problems, but Marquise is going to be a part of my life, and I'm up front with that. I'm not hiding that behind Wanda's back. I told Wanda what it is. Now, you and what you and Dr. Reese got going on, because I, like I said, I heard about them flowers. You didn't know Nikki? Nikki's walking around with fucking box cutters, but you probably didn't know that because you gave her those pills, and then you went on out on a date. Now, you didn't cross the line, Terry. You didn't cross the line. You got me in here arguing Desiree and Wanda's house like this. We need to keep this conversation down. But what you're not going to do is disrespect your mother. I've already told you, I'm not disrespecting you. I just want you to respect what me and Markeisha got going on. And you got to understand that she plays a, a special part in my life. Like, she's putting things together. She's making stuff happen. She's, oh, you don't even know what she does for me. Yeah, well, Wanda seems to think differently. Wanda seems to think that you playing house with the ugly bitch. What you gonna say now, Terry? You bought her a house. I bought us a house. It's just we had a disagreement, and I moved out and got a condo. So now I stay in the condo. Well, that ain't what I heard. I heard she got a key to the condo, Terry. I thought she was living in the house. I thought the condo was supposed to be for you and the baby, Terry. Why are you and the baby? Why is Wanda over here with her mama, Terry? If you bought a condo for her, because CPS came over there. I remember Terry. I went over there and Markeisha, the old scallywag, was on your lap. What, what, you, what, what, you, what are you trying to say? You ain't making no sense right now, Terry. You're catching you up. With all the stress I got going on at the diner, Ma, it's hard to fucking maintain the condo by myself. And you over here talking to me, hanging out with Wanda and them. Whose side are you on? You're supposed to be my mother. Now you're taking sides with them. Whose side are you on? Oh, no, Terry, you're not going to raise your voice to me. I'm with you, and you know I'm here. I came to see my grandbaby. You don't come to the house anymore, so I don't never get to see the kids. And now they got you on appointments, so how can I see my grandchild? I have to come over here on my own, Terry. If Wanda wasn't tripping, Ma, I could come over here. Desiree over there, she took the minivan. I just put gas in there. Ain't no telling where she's about to go. You don't understand how hard it is. I'm trying to provide for you, Charles, Nikki, the babies, Wanda, Markeisha. Listen, I'm doing all I can. It just ain't enough, Terry. I I don't know what to say to you anymore. At first, I thought Beach was all the way gone, but now I'm looking at you and it's you. You're acting just like Charles. Don't you do that, Mom. Don't you do that. What Charles and Mabel had going on was different. Me and Markeisha, we actually like each other. We live together. We talk, we have dinner, we do everything together. What Charles and Mabel did, I don't even know what happened. All I know is Charles said he got drunk and, 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 and she threw that thing on him. And sometimes when it's slippery, when it's wet, you can't control that self. Oh, that's what they all say. Yeah. You know what? I'm done with you. I'm done with you, Terry. You take care of these kids. I'm going to do that, Mom. But just remember, we ain't too different. I love you, but sometimes you just don't understand. I'm doing this for us. I'm doing it for us. So they got a back and forth going on. This is all in the living room. Wanda's in the back room. She just stormed off. Desiree is outside whipping the minivan. So it's fucking crazy going on right now. It's crazy going on right now. Wanda in here sitting on. This is where they should have delivered the baby. They should have delivered the baby on this damn couch with the damn uh, plastic on it so we didn't have all that blood up on the floor. Damn. I'm just trying to tell you, I'm, hey, that's what I saw. I don't, y'all don't be watching the director's cut. That's what I saw. That shit went over like 15 minutes. I was like, damn. Damn. Well, Terry just got a rude awakening from his mother, and he had to call her out. Uh, when's the next time we see Terry? All right. Oh, we got some information, y'all. So at the crib, let's do let's do our research. Let's do our research. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Remember, everything I'm doing is off the top of the head. So, like, 
I know I couldn't I couldn't read what you guys are doing in the chat, but when I get in story mode, I just gotta go, man. It just it's just gotta flow. You know what I mean? So I do all of that off the top of the dome. And that's why I say Nigga, it's just big me, nigga. Boom. I'm really like that. Hey, that's why I say, listen, I love everybody in the community, but I'm in my own lane. I don't compete with nobody. I do my own thing. And don't nobody do what Mo do, because don't nobody break a showdown like Mo break a showdown, because Mo break a showdown, how a show is supposed to be broken down. But let's go do this research. You know, we got the evidence. We got it. We got the paperwork, the actual factual. We got it. All right. We got price wise, price wise auto vehicle sale invoice. Uh, was this Pargan Autos Cars Dealership 174 Aiken Circle? Okay, invoice to Terry Flinnery, 1414 Jefferson Ave, condo number 12, Detroit, Michigan. We're gonna look that up in a minute. Wanda, oh, they delivered it. Damn. Did y'all, hey. So this is the 1990. Did y'all know they had delivery service in the 90s? This nigga Terry got some money, money. They had a delivery service. All right. So LaWanda Roosevelt, 7400 Handover Street. Maps seventy four hundred hand or Hanover. D E T R O I T. All right, so this is where Wanda lives. This is the block Wanda lives on. Damn, I don't know, man. This is like one of them Tubi movies. This is like one of them Tubi movies right here. Hey, man, shout out to Detroit, man. But fuck this. This is like downtown Kansas City. Now, let's see what these niggas is doing. They moving in over here. Ah, fuck that. This is the real, this is the real street here. This is where Wanda and her mama live right here. Damn, you can't even see in. They got a, they got the nerve to have a neighborhood, a neighborhood watch sign. Nigga, who's watching the neighborhood? Shout out to Detroit. Let me see something. They got the neighborhood watch. They need to be watching who live in this house over here. Neighborhood watch. It's <laughs> 30 years later. This is the aftermath. Oh, hold on, where the picture at? All right, let's continue on. So, all right, we know where Wanda lives. They got the 1990 Dodge Caravan white. It had 4,900 miles on it. One owner, clean title, no accidents. Oh, he got her a used car. 12 4, 720 on taxes. Okay, that's good. That's a good deal right there. How much was gas back in? Let's let's see. So this re gas receipts from September 25th looks like 1988. Damn, 35 cents a gallon in 1988. Jeez. They paid cash on pump seven, too. All right, what else we got over here? We got some. That's a U.S. Army bet. Hold on. Hey, low key, low key, Markeisha hating because she got a '90 caravan. Y'all see what uh, Markeisha was driving? Markeisha was driving like an '88 Toyota Corolla. Okay, we got a 1990 Dodge Caravan. Let me. 
Oh, Terry wilding out. Terry is wilding out. I know Terry ain't get her this one. I know Terry ain't buy her this one. This the luxury Dodge Caravan right here. It's only got 47,000 miles on it. 9,900. <laughs> Damn, this is what he bought. Uh, this is what he bought Wanda. This is terrible. This is horrible. I ain't going to lie to you. This is what this nigga bought her. I ain't going to lie, man. Terry was tripping with this. He could have just got her a car. Oh, hell no. Look at the cup holders on this motherfucker. You hit the you hit the turn too hard. This shit is spilling out. Oh man, my nigga Terry didn't did Wanda bad. Oh, Terry didn't did Wanda bad, bro. That's how you know he ain't really he ain't really fucking with Wanda, man. Look at this. Oh, even for the 90s, this is terrible. Oh man, hell no, Terry. That nigga just found any old vehicle. Like, here you go. Oh, hell no, Terry. Not my girl Wanda in this motherfucker. She got the Dolby system. Oh, hell no, Terry. Oh, man. He could have got her something better than this. She got two kids, man. He could have got her like a, a car. The Dodge Caravan? Oh, Terry, no. Oh, man. This is some shit I'd buy my baby mama now. Like, man, look at these pedals. Oh, man. Hey, Miss Kira, that town and country. Hey, that 1990 town and country. Let's see what that looked like compared to this 1990. Let's see what the 1990 town and country. He got the basic of edition. No, not now. Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com and State Farm. The Chrysler Town & Country proclaims its luxury status with a special trim package that's not shared. <laughs> hey, they used to call this shit luxury back in the day. By any of its more mundane people hauler relatives. Like past Town & Country vehicles, this extended body minivan not pleased buyers used to the Teutonic efficiency of many current luxury cars. Town and country feet, but it's buried so far down the dash that it's almost impossible to use while driving. And will keep them from sweating in their tuxedos. <laughs> this nigga said you got AC control in the back seat so you don't sweat in the tux. Ain't no one getting this motherfucker with a tuxedo, man. This is a Jeffrey Dahmer vehicle. Look at this nigga. This nigga looked like he was out there on the OJ crime scene. Comfort of the Chrysler seats should keep even discriminating passengers happy. And the plentiful rear ventilation will keep them from sweating in their tuxedos. The town and country seats can be folded or removed with reasonable effort to provide lots of carrying space for whatever it is that rich people carry. You will. Nigga, rich people ain't driving this bullshit. Hey, nigga. They keep talking about rich niggas, niggas in tuxedos. They making it seem like motherfucking in 1990, Donald Trump had this motherfucker, even though we know Donald Trump been lying his whole fucking life. But we just going to say Donald Trump ain't pulling up in no goddamn Dodge Caravan town and country talking about, come on, guys, this is what rich niggas drive, a town and country. Ain't no rich motherfuckers had this shit. Hey, man, we need to go back. Matter of fact, I need to give me the number to Chrysler. Even though they gone, give me the number to dodge. I'm about to sue these niggas for false advertisement. Ain't no way they trying to tell me that this is the luxury right here. Even for 1990, this ain't luxury. 
I had a 1988 Acra Legend that was more luxury than this. This is not luxury. They talking about whatever rich people put back there. Nigga, listen to this shit. This can be folded or removed with reasonable effort to provide lots of carrying space for whatever it is that rich people carry. You will have to be fairly well off to afford the town and country's $25,000 price. But 20, the 20 miles per gallon that we got in our mileage test is more in line with what regular folks pay to drive a minivan. Hey, they really try to distinguish this between rich niggas and broke niggas. Listen to what they talking about. They saying rich niggas got this and regular folk don't know what 20 miles per gallon is. Listen to this shit. Nigga, they really trying to sell this to some rich people. Listen to this. Whatever it is that rich people carry, you will have to be fairly well off to afford the town and country's $25,000 price. But the 20 miles per gallon that we got in our mileage test is more in line with what regular folks pay to drive a minivan. The EPA rates the town and country at 18 city, 24 highway. Fuel is used by Chrysler's new homegrown V. It's a regular folk. At 77 miles an or a Luxo boat. Lots of front. Nigga. Ain't no one about to be hitting no corners in no fucking Dodge Caravan town and country. Look how they driving this motherfucker. I thought rich niggas drove this. This is some shit that Terry and Meech need when they doing drive-bys. Look how they about to be whipping this motherfucking town and country. Uber needs it. Handling <laughs> is what one would expect from a minivan or a Luxo boat. Lots of front plow and tire scrub and slow suspension response. Look at this the nigga. power steering, however, is quick with lots of feedback. Overall, the town and country <laughs> has good handling by minivan standards. Braking is adequate for a minivan. The town and country's front disc rear drum combination is a far cry from the anti-lock brakes that so many well-off drivers are used to. Stopping distances averaged 147 feet and lockup is plentiful. The good pedal feel is... Nigga, you gonna die in this motherfucking van. You see how long it took for that motherfucker to stop? Nigga. This is the van that kidnapped that nigga Carter at the beginning of the episode. This nigga bought this for Wanda. Talking about, yeah, I got you a minivan out there. You know what I'm saying? That Dodge Caravan. Nigga, this is a getaway vehicle. When we got to pull a heist on a bank or some shit, this is what we need to buy. This shit is not meant for niggas with families. <laughs> That's why the mama wanted the town and country. The, I told y'all the mama. I told y'all the mama was cool. It makes sense. She wanted the town and country. She don't want the basic version. She wants some shit. She could bend some corners when she pulling up on niggas. When she do what she gotta do. Hey, mama's gonna be in and out. Get the town and country, nigga. I need that V6 and that motherfucker. I need to be able to have the niggas in the back with the AC on. Damn, my nigga Terry went out. This nigga bought this for fucking Wanda, bro. It's not enough to keep the brakes out of lock and lateral stability. Could Damn. All right. Well, that's what Terry bought. Let's get back to the paperwork and see if we see anything else we noticed. All right. So we got a uh, body work factory fitted. One title, well, one owner, clean title, uh, no accidents. All right, bet. Oh, man. I did not think we would be going down a Dodge Caravan. Oh, shit, shit. We supposed to finish that. All right, so Terry comes home, and we know that marquisha has been in the drawers. And marquisha is in the drawer, and she finds that out. But. But she don't say nothing about it. Now, if you notice, it's the 90s. But what is off with this scene here? What is off with this scene here? This is the 90s. We just seen what luxury looks like. We just established what luxury looks like in the 90s. What is off in this scene right here? See the van for the babies, man. Put the babies in the back seat of a regular car, man. That damn, you see how that van was driving, Kira? Do you want to put them kids back there? You been in the corner one time. Them car seats is flipping about that van. Well, this is what I noticed that it didn't. It didn't seem like it fit in. 
This refrigerator new as a motherfucker. Exactly, Queen. This refrigerator new as a motherfucker. This refrigerator brand fucking new. This is a whirlpool. Let me see. They got it. They got it on there. This refrigerator new as a motherfucker. No, um, Markeisha's kids, Markeisha's kids are at her mama's house. Remember when they moved into the house, she was like, uh, we over, cause they went over there to lay low in the house and then she moved in, but she told Terry she didn't want him to stay there. Her kids are at her mama house. So she just free, like free roaming around the streets, fucking with niggas. But Terry shows up and Markeisha ain't saying that she found out that he bought a van. And we find out that the, the work ends up getting towed up. That's because the driver crashed. What was his name? Colix? Whatever it was. That old army dude that we knew back in the, the earlier episodes. But she's sitting here, and you know, she's doing the... You you know when someone's bullshitting. Like, have y'all ever been in a situation... Wait, where are we at? Oh, damn. We gotta get a, we gotta get a move on. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, because we had almost an hour already. We got a little sidetrack with that damn caravan. But, um... You know when you in like a group project and you don't you like you really don't know what's going on, but you're trying to act like you know. So you over there like you over here like yeah okay yeah that okay yeah yeah that's what Markeisha's doing because Terry ain't bought her no car, but he bought her a whole house. But she's a little bit jealous about the minivan, so she's rubbing on Terry's back. It's gonna be all right, but Terry found out that the bricks ain't make it through. So we gotta see what happens next. Well, Markeisha leaves here because Terry got to go talk to the clients. He's talking to the people that work for Henry. And the reason he's talking to them is because he's trying to get them to uh, convert over with him. And he's like, listen, I'll give you the bricks for 7000 less. So if we're saying we're going for $25,000, all right, Kendall, we'll be here. Bricks going for $25,000. I'm letting them go for $18,000, $7,000 off the top. But what we'll do is I'll cook it up. And if you know the story about BMF, you know that Terry, the bricks were coming up a little short a little bit later on towards the end and that's what jaybo aka j push was talking about one of his interviews that's why people like getting their work from meech because meech always gave them the purest and he wouldn't cut none of it but we do hear terry say hey i got i got this recipe where i can cut one brick but i'm not cutting it but i can cook it and you know saying work it to turn two one brick into two brick now once we get rid of henry once we get rid of henry there's going to be a price that you guys got to pay so he, he's negotiating right now. Like, all right, listen, 18000 a brick. And if you work with me, we'll be able to flood the streets. Now, it's a no-brainer for me if we got the muscle. Okay, let me get these bricks for, if I get the bricks for 18 instead of 25, this is how I'm going, the calculation in my head. If I'm getting the bricks for 25, let's say every brick for 25000 we're making 10000 profit. So we're getting 35000 off of it. If I'm getting them for 18 I'm going to go ahead and try to still make that $35,000 profit, which is going to, you know, saying give me $17,000. So I make my $7,000 back. You know what I mean? But if you really want to sell that work fast because you don't know how long you're going to last in the dope game, you cut the prices down to $20,000 uh, and probably get like twenty five dollars for your profit and just take that $7,000 and you can re up faster than everybody else because you're letting it go lower than everybody else also. Because Terry's letting the bricks go wholesale. For what let's just say 18 now you normally were selling it for a certain price like i said trying to make ten thousand profit if you cut that profit down to like seven thousand you'll be moving your product so much faster than everybody you'll be doubling up so for every 10 that you was gonna make you're making 14 now you got to get that work out of there that's why you get the better dope lower prices you sell it faster it's just supply and demand it's just easy one-on-one Exactly, Kev. In real life, Terry was making an extra 20 bricks out of 100. Like, Terry was Terry was chopping off the top in real life. <laughs> all right. So all of the guys, they agree. They're like, all right, fuck it. We'll turn on Henry. We still don't trust you. From there, Markeisha goes over to talk to Wanda. Now, they're having a one-on-one. -on -one. That's because she got that address. Now, she shows up in the meet. You know, she got to show off. There ain't nothing wrong with that, though. Now, Desiree's like, okay, I know who you are, scallywag. She's like, look, I came with a peace offering. She sets the gift down. 
Who do you guys think was wrong? Was it Markeisha or was it Wanda for going off? Because, I mean, let's be real. She did show up. Wanda is the baby mama. I usually don't choose sides, but I think I'm on Wanda's side with this. Markeisha knew damn well she shouldn't have showed up. But Markeisha showed up with gifts, though. Well, I mean, it's Terry's money, but she showed up with gifts. Like, here, here, this go for the baby. She showed up with the mink. Oh, I didn't even know you was back in here, Tori. And Tori said Marquise was definitely wrong. Hey, for real. Like, she showed up with the mink on. I don't know, man. I'm, you know, I might, I might have to holler at uh, Wanda's mama. What's happening? You know what I'm saying? Terry, my dog. So I can't really mess with Wanda like that, but shit. I see you ain't got no ring on that finger. <laughs> I ain't seen no niggas coming through. What's happening? I, I, you know, what I'm I ain't got no problem with being a step grandfather. Cause it's like a lot of people in line before it gets to the step grandfather's responsibility. You know what I mean? Like you got the stepdad, you got the dad, you got the stepdad, you got the mom, you got the the grandma, like the real grandma on both sides. You got the real grandpa, like step granddad. Step granddad is like the least responsible person in the family. Like before it gets to be, it's got to go through a filter of fifteen different people. So I might start being a step grandfather instead of a step dad. You know what I mean? I think that might be more appropriate. For me, where I'm at in life, step grandfather. <laughs> well, Wanda and Marquisha, they get into it. Oh, I just came over here to show you some love, and we can we can co-parent. You know, we can both have Terry. He'll come over, take care of the kids. I want to look out for him. Wanda said, "Oh no, no, you didn't just come up in here. You'll always be the side B." I said, "Ooh, wee, ooh, wee." Uh, hey, uh, just win. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that right after. I'm I'm I gotta speed this up because we kind of got a little sidetrack. We already on an hour talking about Terry, but she like you gonna be the side girl. Oh, did I mention I got I got a mink too. I got the fur in there. I got a fur too. What you talking about a fur? I got a fur. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. So she like you didn't get out of here with all that bullshit because I'm carrying this blood. I was like, oh, she do got a point there. She do got a point, but the way Terry operate, that don't even matter because Terry barely be at the house anyway. But as Markeisha is leaving, she throws the mink out. And I'm like, Terry bought that mink for you. Terry is a, hey, Terry is a player, though. We got to give Terry credit, though. Terry bought both of those minks at the same time because, it, hey, hey, cut me a price. You know what I'm saying? Normally, these go for, you know what I'm saying, $10,000 a piece. But look, what if I get two of them? Can you let them go for $8,000 a piece? I buy two of them right now cash. See, Terry is smart. When you buy in bulk, you get discounts. That's why I say I'm not good with gifts. Because if I buy one gift for somebody, I'm like, damn, this gift is good. Let me get the same gift for someone else. Matter of fact, let me get two of those gifts. You know what I mean? Let me get two of them. And there's nothing wrong with that. If I'm buying a mink for, for two of the women I'm talking to, I might as well buy them at the same time and get a discount. Why would I pay full price for them when I can get them on a discount? Buy one, get one half off. You know what I mean? Instead of paying twenty thousand, I'm paying fifteen thousand. Like it's a win-win for everybody. You both get a, a ten thousand dollar mink. I get to save five thousand dollars. Like, come on, you get to be warm in the winter time. Come on. For Wanda to throw that mink out was a little disrespectful. And for that, we still don't trust you. All right, from there. All right, we're going to pick this on up. Markeisha gets pulled over by Vince. Wait, does she got the Acra? Oh, this is a legend. So I had, I, I love Acra legends. I had me an 88 Acra legend and a 95 Acra legend. My 88 kind of looked like this, but this looks like this is a 90. The 88 was a little more like boxed. This is this is when the body started to change because in ninety one is when the uh, ninety one to ninety five is when the uh, the body was the same on the Acres. So this is like the nine. This is like the eighty nine to ninety. Yeah, the eighty nine to ninety version style here. So she ends up getting pulled over, and we finally get introduced to Vince. Now we found out yesterday about this brother Anthony. Now we didn't know who he was or who he worked with. Some people thought he was with Blaze. But it looks like he's a police officer that used to do security for Boom. 
Now he pulls up and he sees Markeisha. And you know how it is. As soon as a nigga get locked up, that means your woman is free game. As soon as a nigga gets locked up, you tend to forget about who he was and who he was fucking with. And now his woman is single and available. And that's just a part of the game. So he went from doing security for Boom to becoming a legitimate police officer, flagging women down in distress and giving them tickets. But instead of giving them tickets, he's giving them digits. And those digits is 555-2233. This nigga Vince has the... <laughs> As the writing capability of a three-year-old. This nigga, he doesn't write like this. He grips his pen like this. And he just scribbles across the thing. Vince. Like, nigga. You didn't need to write it like that, Vince. You could have just put Vince in your number on this form. But this nigga Vince said, I'm shooting my shot. And I'm making sure that this shot is clear. And Markeisha sees it. And we look at her. She looks at us. She looks at the number she's like yeah i'm gonna call this nigga now i didn't understand what this was now was she setting up a meeting with vince or did vince just see her at the bar with when terry showed up was this a planned meeting like did she say hey vince meet me up here so she can introduce terry to him Cause that's what I was thinking it was, but I, I I wasn't for sure. Like, did she say, "Oh, I'm gonna set this up," I'm trying to make Terry jealous? She invited him. See, I I didn't know if it was. I mean, she said the jealous stuff. Oh, okay. I see where you guys are going. Okay, that's why I like the live shows because I was watching. I was thinking, like, did she set this up? But I see what you guys are saying because she did say when you get jealous like that, she's trying to get Terry away from Wanda complete. Oh, I, I, I didn't know. I ain't never had no women try to make me jealous because I ain't gonna get. I don't give a fuck what niggas you fucking with. I don't give a damn. I don't you don't mention to me about no niggas. You I don't give a shit. Oh, my ex-boyfriend. Hey, don't talk to me about your ex-boy. I don't give a fuck about what that nigga talking about. So I didn't know. I never been played. Not like this. I was played one time, but not like this. Oh, okay. Thank y'all. Now I know. If a woman sets up me to meet her at a bar, I'm getting set up. All right. Fellas, y'all hear that. If they invite you to a bar, don't go. We still don't trust you. Yeah, we still don't trust you. Invite to bar is a no-no. Let me write that down. Invite to bar. Invite to bar. No go. All right. We got to protect our... If, oh, unless we take a box cutter. If we take a box cutter with it, we'll be safe. All right. Oh, so she was trying to make him jealous. When she said that, I was thinking that she was bringing him over to be like, hey, he does security for Boom. Let's hire him to, you know what I'm saying, try to arrest like Henry. I wasn't even thinking. I wasn't even thinking make him jealous to get him away from Wanda. Oh. This whole time I was analyzing it wrong. I thought well, I never thought we could trust Markeisha. I told you I haven't liked Markeisha since he sold my nigga Terry that bullshit liability insurance. When she sold that, that nigga couldn't even get flat tires fixed. I knew this was a this wasn't right. Oh man, Kevin Kev said Terry need to put a patch on that eye, wear sunglasses. Hey man, that nigga been that motherfucker looking too, and that nigga Terry be getting up on you close and personal. You need to leave. Hey, brother. <laughs> you need to back the fuck up, nigga. You forget I'm a police officer, nigga. I got that thing on me, nigga. Back the fuck up, man. The goddamn eye is scaring me, bro. Man, Marquisha gonna get this nigga killed. Like, you come on, man. 
Someone's got to tell Terry, dog. You got to stop fucking with her, man. All right. That's pretty much it. After this, she does that. She tells him to fill on the on the drippy drip, which uh, yeah, you know how that goes. <laughs> All right. What y'all think about Terry, man? I'm about to re-up on this drain. We got Meech. We got the administrative group. And we got Henry's story. What y'all think, man? Markeisha wilding out? Or are we, we good with Markeisha? You know what I mean? Or we good with Markeisha? I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, man, because I, I really don't understand. I just don't understand what my man Terry is doing. Every time he look up, he's into some shit because of Markeisha. Markeisha. 